fans, this is your round three review of the Catters versus the Hawks uh, on Easter Monday. What a game. Oh, my God, it was a close one. Oh, my heart, my heart. I, I nearly died. Um, oh, everyone around me, I think, was in the same boat as well. Uh, gee, the boys, they, they gave us a scare, didn't they? It was, uh, oh, my goodness me. Got off to a good start, though. Uh, the boys were really, really clicking uh, early. I think we, I was thinking, oh, my God, don't waste our chances. Uh, when Tommy kicked that first goal from the boundary line uh, off the nice uh, kick inside 50 from Izzy there, I'm thinking, geez, we're on here. Uh, this is good. Um, there's nothing worse than wasting your chances um, in the first few, in the first quarter of the game, and, like kick five goals to one, five points to one goal or something like that, and then all of a sudden the Hawks run over. So it was a nice goal from there. Tommy there. Get, get her out, Izzy. That's the way. Uh, yeah, Cats play well. I was really happy with the way they went early. Uh, Tommy, nice, nice. He'd probably, I, I wouldn't. I didn't think he'd kick that on the boundary there. I thought, oh, maybe he'll go close. The wind was, I don't know if you were at the game or not, but the wind was swirling around everywhere. So it was a tough, tough shot. But uh, wind possibly might have brought it back towards the goals. I'm guessing. Um, yeah. So Cats won sixty five to no, sixty four to fifty nine. I think it was in the end. Uh, just double check that. Yeah, 69 to 64, sorry. A five-point game. We were out to about a five-goal lead at one stage. Um, it was looking pretty good, but I'm not sure what happened there. We sort of t- and, uh, we took our foot off the ball, uh, t- took our foot off the throat a little bit again at the end, which we did last week against uh, Brisbane. So it's getting a bit of a worry. Grind, very nice, Grind. Well done, Grind. Um, he's, he's come alive a little bit. We were, we were going to drop him, weren't we, catch fans, uh, last week or the week before, but um, he's come back to life, which is nice. Uh, he, he faded a little bit in the second half there, but um, I was overall reasonably happy with Grind and happy to, probably happy to keep him for another week. Yeah, you can't, like, Hawkers, you did that many times last night. You can't step off the line. A um, couple of times the umpires didn't even pull you up on it, too, so don't go under a whinge now. Tui, have, have, Tui's kicked, how many goals has Tui kicked this year? Be, what, uh, or I think he's kicked three, maybe four, something like that now. Uh, Tui's, Tui's played okay. He was a little bit quieter than he was last week. He was he was uh, out of control last week, wasn't he? he was, especially that one quarter that he played. But uh, I thought last night Tui was okay, uh, did enough. Um, yeah, so went okay. It's a nice little take your time here, Tui. There's no hurry. Just get on with it. Uh, get the goal, two goals, nothing, or three goals, nothing at this point. Beautiful, right, in, right on top of some Hawks person's head there. That's great. Uh, just, just knock them out in the crowd. That's the way to do it, Tilly. So, yeah, Cats got off to a good start. We were, uh, gave the Hawks a couple there. Strange to see Blitzards going forward. I think that might have been uh, just to throw some taller players into the mix with Tommy being the lone big fella down down in the forward line there. So that was an interesting. I don't think he hung around there much, but um, he, he sort of floated through and played a little bit in the ruck, um, but he was okay, I suppose. Uh, I think I, I think he had one reasonable quarter last night. I um, didn't really rate him too highly for the, for the overall night, even though as a, as a whole the back line did pretty good. It was a bit of a bit of a dog's breakfast um, from both teams, I suppose, going forward. But uh, I suppose if anyone's going to get a pat on the back, it's probably the back line. This was a great goal. We're 48 metres out there from uh, the from the rear admiral or uh, uh, what's constable? Uh, yeah, nice one there uh, from Chook. Uh, I love that guy. Look at this. Ooh, it does it takes a step? Only needs a step. Bang! Got that. Coaching match committee, selection committee. I want to get picked for next week. So hopefully he keeps his spot on the side because he, he's a bloke that needs a bit of a run. Now, what did everyone think of old Sherl? Uh, not old Sherl, young Sherlock Holmes, uh, Maxie. Uh, he, he got off to a pretty good start here. This is Elwood. Uh, Coppin, uh, I think, was behind. I didn't really see what happened here, so I'm not sure why he got the free kick. But he why he got the free kick. But he was looking for uh, Hawko the whole time. Hawko made about three leads, I think. In the end, I think this was probably just beyond Selwood a little bit too much, and he just his eyes kept out and look at Stanley there in the background, thinking I'll have that. Uh, no, Stanley, just stay away. Oh, that's got to be five weeks, surely. It's good enough for Danger. It's good enough for him. Come on, give him five weeks. We don't want to see you ever again. No, nah, Hawko. Free, you know, he'll, he'll take that. He'll take that. Uh, he gets stuck. What, what are you doing with Smith? Smith faking a little bit of uh, rough and tough. Look at that. Just keep. He's trying. If anything, he's trying to keep the Geelong boys away. Impy's having a crack at him though. Ah, it's all just. It's all just nothing really there. Uh, look at this. Look at that. Get off me. Get off me. Says Higgins. Unfortunately, Higgins did his hamstring. Uh, I think in the second half of the game. So um, he looks like he might be missing a few at his age. Um, probably. Oh. I'm not the club doctor, but yeah, probably two, maybe three. Let's see how let's see how we go. It's early in the year, so 
I guess if you're going to ping one, do it early. You don't want to be doing that and losing your spot on the side, uh, round 17 or round 18. Nice little hand. Look at this candy. Oh, beautiful. Look at that from Parfit. That was great, wasn't it? I loved that on the night. Oh, my God. He uh, completely uh, wrong-footed him there. So I'm, I can't pronounce that guy's name. CJ, they call him at the club. I'm going to have to learn that one because he was really, uh, for, as far as Hawthorne players go, I thought he was very impressive and all the, all the Cats fans around me uh, thought the same as well. They were really impressed with how much ground he covered. and uh, He's so fast. He's probably just decision-making. Lets, lets him down a little bit. Selwood so got a lot of booze, as he always does. A little push in the back there. You know, they let that go half the time, don't they? But uh, anyway, we got the free kick there. And Jack Henry decides to go back and uh, kick one of his two goals. Could have almost had three on the night, really. Uh, with that, look at Ray. Bit of TV time for Ray, Razor Ray there. Can't help himself, can he? He was everywhere. Like He was probably the best player on the ground again, Ray, Ray Chamberlain. He's, he loves these big contests. Get into it, Ray, why don't you? Henry goes back. I wasn't confident Henry would kick this, actually. I thought he might just drag it a little bit. Uh, but no, he went back very confident, looking good. Uh, interesting that, yeah, threw a few taller guys. Well, I think he's a sort of a mid sort of tall. Threw him back. Uh, threw him forward, sorry, along with Blitz up, so as I said earlier in the piece. Uh, Connor there with a nice little handball. Deliberate camera. Yeah, you're going to... Look at that. Look at Ray. He's, you could see him. I was watching him straight away. I'm thinking, he's got a... He's, he's going about 60k an hour. Can't wait to sort of give that deliberate out of bounds. That's his moment. He he he, he wake up. He wakes up in the morning hoping for those opportunities. I'm sure of it. Look at this. This was the moment. This is the scarlet topoke with the spoil or whatever you call it. Look at this. Give it off. Oh, look at Clark. Where's he come from? You saying bolt? Go, Clark. Go. The crowd around me. There's about a thousand people all stood up. Get in. Sit down. No, we couldn't see. But everyone stood up. Clark goes bang. Oh my God. We thought we had it, didn't we? We thought that was it. That was the game breaker. Uh, the dagger in the heart, Clark. Oh, there's no chance Hawks can catch us now. No chance in hell. Uh, what is there? Still seven minutes. I, I'm sitting in the crowd thinking, oh, surely, surely uh, there's 30 seconds to go. Uh, <laughs> no, I did. The, the, the final quarter was going to go for 34 minutes. What was going on there? Oh, my God. Did the timekeeper fall asleep or something like that? But, uh, look at this. Look at the run from Clark. Look at Hawko. Hawko, bit of IQ. He's, he kicks it out back out to... Uh, Henry, Henry just creates a bit of space there for Clark, and there you go. Look at the Cats fans celebrating. Look at him do the finger twirl, a la Motlop back in the day. I think Motlop's still doing that for Port. I'm not sure. Uh, that was fantastic, wasn't it? And this is, uh, oh god, and yeah, I think we we'll let Hawks get a goal shortly. Oh, I can't remember this one. Oh, this bloke. He can, who is this bloke? He had six touches on the night at this point. All of a sudden, pops up and does that, and I'm thinking, oh, that was within a few seconds of. Uh, of uh, the Clark goal, yeah, running down the wings. Anyway, it was it was a it was a tough watch, wasn't it, Cats fans? Uh, looking at a few of the comments on Twitter after the game, uh, a few people weren't too happy with the way we were playing, uh, which is fair enough. I think you know I, I was reasonably I was just happy to be back at the MCG, and I was I was reasonably happy with the contest. It's all on the Cats, and um, you know it's sometimes it, sometimes they're high scoring games, sometimes they're not. Uh, clearly, the Cats aren't top gear at the minute, and, um, and the Hawks are probably not one of the stronger teams. That's so not like back in the day, uh, in the you know ten years ago when we were both top of the ladder, and we just played some amazing contests. We will still get those crazy close games every now and then. Look at Hawkeye. This is I thought surely he's just going to milk the last thirty seconds of the game here. People behind me is like, nah, two or three minutes to go, he's, and I'm like, you serious? Uh, Hawkeye, take your time, think it through. The umpires will hurry up if you take too long. I think these days. Guthrie, you've had enough, Guthrie. 43 touches on the night. How much do you want? Uh, Guthrie had way too much of it. Um, okay, like, no, I'm going to run the ball, take my time. He hasn't had a cramp, though. That's interesting. He didn't cramp up at this point. How close did he go? Everyone rise. It's No, it's a post. Anyway, surely that's enough. Surely there's 10 seconds left. He's milk at good 30 there. That's end of the game. Uh, what are you going to do? I thought, well, at least at this point, I was like thinking... We've probably got it here. You can see uh, some some fella on the Cats in the change bench holding up the 30 seconds left sign, the big red 30 seconds left sign. I thought, we've got to hang on here. We're going to hang on. The boys are getting their hands on it. Yeah, it's scrappy. It's ugly. Hawks seem to have kind of fired the last shot. They run out of energy. They're not getting any clean ball anymore. Um, you think, yeah, surely we've got it. 
Look at Billy and his brother there giving Jeff some, some shit. Uh, they're loving it. Jeff's not too happy, but that's all right, Jeff. You know, you win, you'll, you win the occasional Easter Monday game. I think you won two out of ten, but, you know, you'll enjoy it. There we go, Smith. Don't celebrate too much, Smith. Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, settle down. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll have a heart attack. Oh, dear. Anyway, we got the win. We got the win, Cats fans. That's all that matters at the end of the day, isn't it? You get the win and you just walk away. Away and you bank that one. You bank him early in the year. Uh, and that's really all that matters, isn't it? So what are you going to what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, I thought uh, I mentioned earlier. I thought Holmes played okay. His first one up. Uh, Guthrie clearly a ball maybe had like forty three touches and just I thought he was best on ground easily. Um, not only best on ground, but best on ground all of the four quarters, uh, or at least in the top three players each of the four quarters uh, for the game. He was just, he was an extraordinary night. Yeah, he wasn't, I think he went at about 81% efficiency, things like that, and he made a couple of errors here and there, but um, everyone who's going to get 43 touches is going to make the odd error, so if you're going to highlight that sort of stuff, you're just crazy. So, um, you know, if anyone else wants to go off and get 43 possessions, um, go for it. Uh, Guthrie is just absolute machine. Um, I couldn't believe what I was seeing from Guthrie. I, I was just gobsmacked the whole, the whole night, the whole afternoon. Um, so yeah, a bit of a shame. Higo and uh, and Frank the Tank got a couple of injuries. I think Frank might have hurt his uh, knee. Oh, sorry, his ankle. Uh, Higo done a bit of a hammy, which is um, he's had a few of them I think over the years. So that's a bit of a shame. Uh, good to see Mark O'Connor had another good tag and roll, another good game against um, Tom Mitchell. He went on this time. Uh, did really well on him in the first half. Mitchell sort of got a probably maybe got the points a little bit in the second half. Or at least drew, drew even with him. I think he might have finished in the mid twenties or something like that. But uh, but Connor had a lot of it, and I was probably really really impressed with not only how many possessions he got as well, but uh, just his tackling. I think he led us in tackles. I'm not sure how many he had, but um, it was up there around six or seven or something like that. So any any time one of our boys gets six or seven tackles or more, I'm I'm just that's that's for me that's a really big thing. Uh, there's a couple of blokes that just run around and just don't do anything of that sort. So uh, I was really I was really pleased with Mark O'Connor and um, I had him in my, my best players on the night as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Isaac Smith, it was interesting. I'm not sure if, if you're at the game, you probably, maybe if, even if you weren't on the TV, get, hearing him getting booed. Uh, it reminded me of when Ablett, Gary Ablett Jr. was getting booed uh, and all the opposition supporters were booing him, but all the Cat supporters tried to counter that by, by cheering him on. And that will be the only time I, maybe if he gets up on the premiership day at the end of the year, but that will be the only time that I ever cheer Isaac Smith. Uh, it's just to drain out all the boos from the Hawks supporters. So shame on you, Hawks supporters, if you're watching this video. How can you boo someone who's won that many premierships for your club? Nah, anyway, yeah, each to their own, I suppose. Um, I said CJ was impressive from the Hawks. Uh, he'll, he'll go okay as long as, as, long as he uh, keeps learning the craft. I think he's going to be a player to watch in years to come. Um, Hawks are a young side. I don't think they're going to win too many games this year. But, um, you know, they, they look pretty good. As I said, I don't think we're really flying at the moment, but I'm just happy to get two wins out of three, you know. Early in the year, I don't want to be playing like this round 18, but, you know, if you're going to play like this round three and still get the wins, well, you take it. So, you know, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it. Um, I don't know if anyone... I didn't see it on the night, but I watched the highlights uh, or a couple of highlights um the following this morning, actually, saw the pigeon on the ground. Thinking, geez, that poor pigeon. Uh, he, he had no fear, though. He, he didn't seem to be too worried. Um, that little pigeon in the in the centre bench, um, just, oh, it's my spot. It's my, it's my, it's my house. I'm, I'm sitting here. So, um, good on you, Mr. Pigeon. Uh, happy happy with your uh, efforts there. Uh, what else can I talk about? I think that's about it. So, yeah, no, it was a good game. I think overall, I was happy with the game. I enjoyed being back at the MCG. Uh, I don't think I'll probably get to the Melbourne game next week. I might watch that one on the telly with the kids. Um, we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, but you probably won't, probably won't get to that game. Watch that one on the telly and maybe get a cheese platter or something like that. Go with those Melbourne games. We, we always like to do that. Um, and yeah, uh, so what I what I thought, like I did last time, we might go through a few of the uh, three of the tweets. Now, what have we got here? Sorry, just a couple of the thoughts from the from a few of the people out there. So we've got, what is that, Adrian Hodgson from AO Hodgson. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Adrian. Uh, we, used the, we used to be fourth quarter specialists. Now it seems we're the opposite. Tempo footy for three quarters, and then the last quarter we let the opposition run. Happened in the second half of the grand final last year, hopefully having Cameron and Danger back in the side of the missing links. Yeah, good observation, Adrian. I, I think the last, it's, maybe that's something to do with the interchange cap. Um, you know, we definitely were not 
run and out games as well as we used to. So it'll be interesting to see how that's going. Clearly off a limited pre-season, that might have something to do with it. And a couple of injuries, um, something to do with it as well. I mean, you know, uh, Brisbane last week brought on uh, their, their medical sub halfway through that last quarter, and that might have helped them a little bit too. Um, so, yeah, it's a good observation, but interesting to keep an eye on that over the next couple of weeks to see if that's a trend that's, uh, or if that's just a... It's a pretty small sample size at the moment, but um, we'll see if that sort of continues on in the next few weeks. Thanks, thanks, Adrian. Scott Pickering uh, says, "Well, we're playing well, playing like crabs, but we are two and one, better than zero and three. Let's hope we can improve. Long way to go. Yeah, it's a bit of a marathon this season, isn't it, Scott? Um, so three games in, could have easily been zero and three. Could have, you know, potentially could have been three and zero as well. So you know, depends what how you want to look at these things. Glass half full, glass half empty." Uh, I'm, I'm happy to take a two and one. I think if you win two out of three games for the whole year, would that put you around 15 games for the year? Um, you know, if we win 15 games this year, I'm, I'm always happy with a 15 game win season. Clearly, it's better to win 18 or 17 or 18 games, and you'd probably finish in the top four. Um, but you know, if Cats can sort of pull out 15 wins and uh, and just be cherry ripe come finals time. You know, I'll be happy with that. So we'll see, we'll see how we go. We'll see how in the next few weeks it goes uh, for the Cats, Scott. Uh, General, 16th General says, it's like we're treading water until we get our midfield brigade back. Yeah, look, we're missing a couple, aren't we? We've got Danger out. We're going to be missing Higgins for a little bit now as well. Um, Manangola couldn't quite get up. Hopefully he'll be okay. Hopefully the club's just given him that extra week and it's not one of those things that... Where's Manangola like six weeks later? Like, you know, you hopefully we get him back. It was, fine. It was good to finally get Duncan back. Uh, he'll be a bit better for the run, uh, yeah, a heap of it, but uh, you know, a couple of, probably his disposal wasn't 100% uh, what we're used to with Duncan. So hopefully a few more games for him and um, it'll be a lot better in the next couple of weeks there. So, yeah, I think definitely not top gear at the minute. Um, we'll see we'll see what happens when we get a few few blokes back, if we can get fit. Um, you know, the, Clearly, every game you play, you run the risk of getting more injuries. So in, in comes a few, out goes a few. That might just be the, the way it goes. Um, but it would be good to get a full list of players. Uh, it really does help your chances at a premiership if you can get a few players on the field. That'd be great. Uh, Mel says, uh, Mel at Melcat says, we're not playing anywhere near our best, but scrapping through. Injury suspensions hurting us right now. Next week, a massive challenge after a shorter break. What a game from Guthers. What a game indeed from Guthrie. 43 touches, as I said. Absolute ball magnet. Leather poisoning. He'll, he'll wake up. Thinking he's gone all right. The boy's got the win. I don't think we would have got it if it wasn't for him. They just seem to be everywhere. Him and Duncan just seem to be holding the ball, kicking it to themselves almost. Um, yeah, got Melbourne next week, so we'll see how that. They're, they're three and zero at the moment. Um, you know, but it's probably a fifty-fifty game, maybe. Uh, maybe Melbourne slight favourites, I guess. Um, you know, we're still the premiership. We're still the premiership side. Sorry, we're still the grand final side from last year. We've won two in a row, uh, so we're, we're. It's not like we're winning one, losing one, um, but. I think, we, I think Geelong will only get better, Mel. I think we're just going to hopefully learn from that. Um, don't, be, don't walk away from last night's game too happy with ourselves. Take the win. Um, have a look at the game, look at the footage, get some things right for next week um, and have a red-hot crack against Melbourne. Um, you know, I'd say the test against Brisbane was probably a bigger test. Um, so we'll see how we go against the Ds uh, on the... I think it's in, on the Sunday, I think. Uh, yeah, see what that see what challenge that sort of presents uh, for us. They might they might be a really good team, uh, or they might just be lucky to play a couple of dud teams in the first uh, three weeks of the year. We'll see. Uh, Joey M, the Warrior Boy, sixty seven, uh, says got the W, and that's about it. Stop start footy wasn't really executed well. A better side would have punished us. Positives: the Tommy Atkins and Marco Connor evolution. Uh, Guff and Path continuing from where they left off last year concerns. Reese and our small forwards. Yeah, Joey uh, got the win. Yes, uh, it's important to get those wins early. Uh, the the style, the Geelong style that we're playing, it's not perfect at the moment. Uh, clearly, it's still rusty. I'm not going to say that every week, it's, but it's early in the season. So I think that's the kind of stuff that you hopefully will start seeing the boys get a little bit better at executing as the weeks go by, uh, depending on how the game flow is going. If we're in front, you know, you'd hope see the boys get a little bit better at that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, it looks like we're tiring a little bit in games as well. So whether that's a style that needs to be modified a little bit or the coaches need to maybe think about how it's all playing out. It's, it's a new it's a new era with these reduced interchanges. So uh, maybe this style is not going to hold up. Um, and, you know, it took us to a grand final, but 
Um, if we see Enrichment again in the finals, I don't know if it's going to hold up against a team like that. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Definitely agree with you on the Tommy Atkins. I'm a big fan of Tommy. I uh, lo love when he gets a game, and he just seems to be getting better um, month after month, Tommy. Um, and clearly, Mark Kaya, he's probably been one of our best players the last couple of weeks now. Um, Parfit, I thought he was reasonably quiet, but he did a lot of good things, especially that sell on the candy goal a bit later on. Uh, Reese didn't seem to, I mean, he got dominated by a big boy, McAvoy, didn't he? Um, I don't know who you can bring in for Reese at the moment. I'd just say, let him let him have a go. Hopefully, he'll play a little bit better next week. He's got Maxi Gore, so we'll see. We'll see how he goes. Now, I can never say this one. The chaps, chat, cats. I'm only saying it because I'm reading it out on the screen. So let the speed brigade fly. No point in having Jordan Clark, Isaac Smith, Gary Rowan, Luke Dalhouse, Patrick Dangerfield, Brandon Farper, etc., and not attack the game with dare. I get that this possession style game beats 70% 70, 70 of the comp, but it kills us versus teams like Richmond. Yeah, exactly, boys. Um, I think it'd be interesting to see the, how the coaches have a look at this and whether they do let that go. Maybe they're holding, uh, holding back a little bit from the style that we want to play. Uh, a bit later in the year, but to be, I, I was thinking surely we get uh, Isaac Smith and we got Clark and a few other guys and we're just going to run teams off their feet, uh, run it down one end to the other. Um, especially, it doesn't look like we've changed our style from that, that holding possession, um, but when we go, we really go. Uh, hasn't, we haven't really seen, have seen glimpses of it, but be nice to see the boys play with a bit more dare uh, and a bit more energy, a bit more speed up the wings there. That'll be, that'll be good to see. Jared Mast uh, says, yeah, it was a scrappy game, but Gath Guthrie and Adkins, Adkins, uh, spelt so many different ways that Ad my brother says Adkins, so we just, we call him Adkins. I think it's Atkins, um, but we, we always call him Adkins, just more for a laugh. Uh, so, yes, it was a scrappy game, but Guthrie and Adkins were standouts for me. Skills were down across the board. Looked like wooden spoon battle again. Umpires put the whistle away mostly this week. I think that helped us too. Yeah, we, we thought... Uh, the umpiring was pretty bad for both teams, really. I think Hawthorne might have won the free kick count, but I think we got a few dodgy free kicks. They got a few dodgy free kicks. Some things were missed. There was one tackle decision, uh, or one one uh, tackle that was called holding the man. I'm like, well, of course he's holding the man. He's trying to tackle him. And it was like, oh, my God. Couldn't, I'm trying to remember the player involved in that one, but that was ridiculous. So uh, thanks, Jared. Uh, who else we got? One more, I think. Uh, I think this is from, yeah, Lucky Escape. Uh, Lil says Lucky Escape, got the four points. Not the most watchable, prettiest game, um, but certainly a top two heart thump in round three games. Yeah, definitely a heart thump, wasn't it, Lil? It was uh, insane. Uh, God, I, I took, took hours to calm down from that. Um, I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll cope another one like that. I just, want to, I just want to smash Hawthorne. Can we just go to a Hawthorne Geelong game and just uh, smash them? That'd be great. Uh, I just I feel so much better when we don't have to worry about the result. For 120 minutes of football. Anyway, how'd you how'd you find the result? Are you happy with the win? Uh, I'm happy to put that one away. It's oh, too stressful playing Hawthorne. Uh, go Cats. Uh, we've got the win. That's all that really matters. We've got Melbourne next week. I'm feeling pretty positive about that. I think uh, if we can get through, if we can somehow get over Melbourne and we'll be sitting at 3-1, and one, I think the season's set up pretty well. Uh, and I'll be looking forward to playing North the week after. I'm not taking that one for granted like we took the Adelaide game for granted, but goodness me, uh, playing North at uh, the GM, uh, GMHBA, goodness me, if we lose that, unbelievable. Uh, let's worry about Melbourne first one week at a time. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I really appreciate that if you could, and thanks to everyone else that might have hit the subscribe button over the last few weeks. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Um, so really interested in your feedback too. Shoot me a message. Uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter if you if you're in that area, um, or shoot me a message in the um, in the comments as well. That'd be really great. Um, go cats. See you guys soon. Take care.